yeah so we talked about uh, various characteristic of or the specifications of data converters right those data converters might be adc or dac so of the things you already have studied somewhere right so one more thing we have studied uh, um, there is something called one LSP. One LSP is equal to how much? V ref divided by two raised to n. And uh, for the budget purpose, we are making it V ref 0.5 times of this box, so that uh, <coughs> it is within the the budget. And when if you are drawing with respect to time, the quantization noise, or if you translate this characteristic with respect to time you are going to see such kind of uh, such kind of uh, response where this will be within plus or minus half lsp and for uh, budget purpose we are making half lsp as your budget for keeping the noise of and we understand what is contagion noise right contagion noise in time and contagion noise in uh, amplitude we know about all these things and this t is actually the <coughs> time sample time <coughs> if we integrate it from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 so this will be minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 of 0 to t then this will be from minus sorry minus t by 2 plus t by 2 so if it is from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 and if I am looking at the RMS value VQ square dt over 1 by t time I need to take the square root of that and that will give me VLSV by square root of 12. So quantization noise has to be lesser than VLSV by square root of 12. So if you are having VLSV is equal to V ref by 2 raised to n and that much quantization noise in RMS you are going to see in this uh, particular kind of uh, approach. <coughs> However, there is uh, other techniques which is called stochastic approach where you know that it is a uh, uniformly distributed within with the amplitude of half LSP or you can say that it will be like this. So, if I am draw, uh, drawing the probability density function with respect to x, the f of quantization noise in terms of x will be from minus VLSB to plus VLSB having the height of 1 by VLSB. That is the approximation or it is a stochastic approach. If I am integrating it, uh, this area under the, the curve, it will be 1 and if I am doing so, then I can find out it is also giving the same answer. I am not going into derivation and all these things, but you can go through when you are reading the book. This is from John Martin. This is second approach. This is also giving the same answer. It is VLSV by square root of 12. <coughs> One more thing. Now I am interested in something called signal to quantization noise ratio, <coughs> SQNR, where V in RMS by VQ RMS, because here it is a signal and VQ RMS, that is my noise. So signal to noise ratio in in decibel can be written as 20 log v ref by square root of 12 and v rf by square root of 12 because these this value is already known to me and this value is also known to me right so if this is the case i am going to see 6.02 n where n is nothing but number of bits this is coming because of vlsb is equal to v ref by 2 raised to n so v ref cancels each other and it gives us only 2 raised to n at the end. So this is going to give me 6.02 n in dB, right. So this is the SQNR, signal to quantization noise ratio. <coughs> but if your input is actually sine wave, look at this, if it is sine wave, then V in RMS will change to V ref divided by 2 square root of 2 and divide by the quantization noise which is VLSV by square root of 12 
and this is going to give me new equation which is sqnr is equal to 6.02 n plus 1.76 db so these two equations are uh, separated by each other by 1.76 db and this is coming because of only one reason in one case we have some just rms value where you don't have square root of 2 and another case <coughs> is it's a sine wave with uh, v, uh, v in rms is equal to v up by 2 square root of 2 right so this is how you will have some two different results but we are going to consider this one or for the normal calculation if i am asking you if i am supposed to uh, implement 10 bits of adc how much snr can i achieve so 10 bits how much snr i can achieve what do you think of course <laughs> straightforward <laughs> so 61.78 61.86 right but generally when we are talking we generally don't take this 1.76 in picture we just say that it's approximately 60 db we don't even look at 0 0.2 right so approximately 60 db then it's fine and each beat is giving me the dynamic range of 2 oh, sorry 6 db so look at this if I am implementing one beat of ADC, how much uh, SNR can I achieve with just 6.02 N? 60. Mm -hmm. Two bits, how much? 12, 12 dB and so on. So each beat is having <coughs> increment of SNR by 6 dB or you can say that the dynamic range is increased by double or if you increase the dynamic range by double, you can extract extra beat out of it. Dynamic range of, look earlier, look, this is only one beat. So what you can see, the doubt. Or let's say there are only <coughs> something like four levels. Right. So here the dynamic range is poor compared to <laughs> this one when they are 8. So how much improvement you are seeing? That is 6 dB. Each bead is improving 6 dB or it's improved by double. It's 2 in ratio. So 6 dB, 20 log x equal to 6 dB. So how much is x? No, you have to find it out. The, otherwise, you can cannot understand the whole theory. Yeah, it's two, and that is two I am talking about. There are two different uh, units I am talking. One is in log scale, one is in linear scale. In log scale, if dynamic range is improved by six dB, in linear scale you are improving by double. Now, do you understand? If in le uh, decibel I am increasing by twelve dB, I am improving by four. I'm not considering it's actually log 2 is 3. Point, how much 3.14 or log 2. Hmm. 0.3140 yeah, or something right so if you solve this you get uh, exact 6 6 dB right but actually it's not exact 2 but it's something uh, 2 point something is there right? so I drop that value well, similar to this four right so <coughs> V ref equal to? V yeah, so whenever we are talking about any SNR, so SQNR or SNR, when we are having range from, let's say, you can, you can give input till VDD, right, let's say it's in DB, <coughs> so this will be 20 log VDD. So, if I am drawing the SQNR plot for it will keep on increasing with respect to amplitude SQNR in dB is going to be get increased and what I am talking about it's 
the maximum peak SNR is equal to 6.02 n plus 127.6. This point is 6.02 n plus 127.6. Not in between. Because you can have the full scale uh, possibility uh, when you are giving the uh, highest input. Otherwise, there is no poss possible data, right? So when it's SNR, SNR is measured for the maximum value, right? Okay. So quantization noise may be modeled as a random quantity uniformly between minus uh, one LSB by two to plus LSB by two for a sinusoidal input. This results as this one, SNR or SQL. Some people drop the Q word, right? So for an ideal n-bit converter, this is the case. But this is the maximum SNR. Just look at this. There is one adjective written before SNR. There is maximum. Maximum SNR is equal to 6.02n plus 1.76. Right? This is not for the minimum one or in between. So the plot which I told you, <coughs> now there is one extra thing is written here, it's called decibel, FS is stands, stands for full scale. Full scale is the one where you are normalizing the whole plot with respect to VDD. So this 0 dB is the best possible in the case of ideal case. And your VDD might be any value. Let's assume that VDD is 3.3 volt, but I normalize the whole x axis with respect to 3.3 volt. So 0 dB is equal to VDD now. Because this is this this point is actually divided by 3, so it's going to give you 1. Although it is 3.3 volt only. Look, this value is 3.3 volt, normalizes 0 dB means divide by 3.3 volt which is equal to 1, 1 dB, 1 volt, uh, 1 in linear scale is equal to 0 dB but as I am normalizing it with respect to VDD or the full scale value I am going to call this one as dBFS, right? where F, F and S are capital. <coughs> so this is the normalized curve and when we are saying the SNR, the best possible SNR is here. So let's can you keep this as your surprise quiz? <laughs> Let's call this. In the previous graph, it's, it drops linearly. Where? The graph SNR is decreasing. Where? Uh, as the input decreases. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Like the okay. So, this is, there are two possibilities. Let's assume you are making three bits of ADC, right? So three bits of ADC. So <coughs> this is full scale from minus V reference to plus V reference, right? And each one of them is one LSP which is will be wrapped by 8. Now, if my input is this one, what is the SNR I am going to see? It's possible thing, right? I can give input which is lesser than 1 LSP, right? So, what I am going to see in SNR? I cannot detect anything by the way. Look, there is nothing, nothing will be detected. Look, even if I am sampling anything, look, in, in this one, I am not going to see anything. The output will be 0. So, the SNR will be 0. So, as it is shown here, let us assume that supply voltage is 1 volt. <coughs> supply voltage is 1 volt. So, this is exactly, even though it is normalized, this is 1 volt and this will be 1 millivolt, right? If I am giving anything lesser than 1 millivolt, the SNR is poor or less than 1. Right? This is the meaning of this. Or you can say that this is the dynamic range. I cannot go lower than this. If I go lower than this, 
there is no no uh, no usage i not i am not going to see anything this is this point right where the snr is zero but if i go little bit higher now what i can see is this one something like this right so this staircase is non linear but still how many steps i can see i cannot see the full scale eight steps but i am going to see only four steps if there are four steps or four values because this is also sample in amplitude so the base case noise might be at the same place noise is a is at same place which is v rep by square root of 12 noise because noise is not changing the place because your sampling and all these things at same place let's say or so average of these two these all is equal to v rep by square root of 12 but now as your input is here what snr you are going to see improved, improved but uh, it may not be the best one best is possible when i increase this to vdd when signal is also improved maybe this will also increase for sure little bit right it's a dynamic of your circuit so snr in overall will improve because the number of steps are fixed so to get the best result you should go till the full scale if you don't go till full scale you will get something uh, worse result but this is the ideal case what will happen if you go till vdd maybe output will get saturated before vdd itself because there might be some filters there might be some pre amplifier inside all these things so output is uh, reaching vdd maybe before before your vdd vdd is here but just before vdd your output gets saturated and that's why in reality your best snr is near to vdd but not exactly at vdd and that is what i wrote but in ideal case yeah you can reach at vdd itself right this is the ideal case right <coughs> so now let's try this question so do not use calculator so these values has to be on your fingertip you can sit here sorry you can sit here no problem you can also sit here so now this will answer your question so what is the best snr you can achieve by the way for this system best hmm? best yeah the maximum snr no you have to give me the numbers look what are you talking about hmm? around 72 db right so 72 db you should know the table of 6 if you forget then please be expert of table uh, on table of 6 right so approximately 72 db right but if i am applying 200 millivolt peak to peak i am not going to get 72 db i am going to get something else and what is that something else is hmm? why half look this is happening at 72 db is happening at 5 volt so what is the uh, ratio difference between 5 volt and 200 millivolt peak to peak
I don't know. You solve this. This is your surprise too. So I can give you all the like solution is on next slide. So Nazrul, you got the answer. So how much in DB? No, no maximum. You just read the question and just give me the answer. Did you get the answer? Quick. Let's see. Iman Sukh. So I'm expecting some fast answer from Iman Sukh or Dinesh. Right? Those who are ADC experts who are working on ADC. ADC deck. Do not use calculator. Thirty deep. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> so have you asked me question, like thirty dB and then this one or thirty dB? Okay. So how did you get this answer? Okay. One LSB is four millivolts. So and input is two hundred millivolts in between. Okay. And it will consider only five bit. Five bit control. So what are you doing? Yeah. Sandeep? It will be around 1.25 So the answer is 30 dB. 76.65. Okay. Okay, so what Subham is saying? 76.65. This is Subham's answer. Without looking, without looking at anything, we can say that. Yeah, the, uh, Himanshu was saying something. Uh, what I I wanted to say. Approx forty dB. No, no, you were saying something just before this, no? Yeah. How can you go beyond seventy two dB? Yeah. So, so this must be the wrong answer for sure. Right. You cannot go beyond. The base is 72. How, how can you get 76.65 dB? I don't know. Yeah, so uh, Himanshu, what you were saying? Answer? Yeah, approx 40 dB, sir. 40 dB. Like without calculator, without fixing. Okay. It will be around between uh, 6 dB and 7 dB. Like yeah. It will be 6.6. How did you get this? So I got uh, one LSB. Then I counted how many LSBs. Okay, so maybe like uh, you may like my technique also. So the, at five volt, if I am applying five volt sine, uh, five volt sine wave, seventy two dB I'll get, right? So if I apply two hundred millivolt, how much is the SNR, right? That is what I need to find out. So from here, five volt to two hundred millivolt, what is the difference? By the way, twenty five. How much in twenty five in dB? This is a linear scale. 
it is a db no <coughs> no no i'm i'm telling you maybe how to okay okay tell me what is scenario you got 25 db i don't know all six different answers or raman the way maybe himanshu is calculating is correct but not a faster way so i was looking at the faster uh, faster way so this 5 by 200 is 25 how much 25 in db by the way <coughs> approximately 28 so if you look at this curve this is 1 db per db curve by the way so slope is this one is 1 db if 1 db is increasing this side 1 db as i told you right so 28 db if i am coming down base case was 72 db if i am coming down here maybe at somewhere 200 milli Right here, let's say. So it's how much? Twenty-eight dB, right? So twenty-eight dB, or if I come down twenty-eight dB, what will be my SN? You have to just subtract the, these two quantities, right? That will give me the SN. From here to here, if it is twenty-eight dB. Because I am coming this side twenty eight dB down, so this side also twenty eight dB down. Right. So answer is forty six dB. This is precise answer. If seventy two dB has not been considered, it's seventy four. Right. With seventy two, it will be forty four. So what you got? Iman, you got forty dB. So, approx. Okay. <laughs> I just have to choose this one LSB as one point. Yeah, that is also fine. That is also one way. One LSB. How much is it? Just keep on increasing at two hundred millivolt. How many? Uh, how much LSB you are getting, right? So, almost two hundred. Right. So you can add all these things, and on the basis of the label, how many number of bits you are extracting from this. That will decide, yes or no. Right. Anyway, this is those this is for those people who doesn't understand digital system. Just look at this and uh, okay, not look at uh, how the, this is derived and all. Right. Just look at all these things. And if you forgot, please go through this slide and go through the chapter of some like Morris Mann or whatever book you are following. Right. these are the things which we need to use for edc and dac right you understand sign magnitude right there has to be sign bit one complement offset and two's complement right somewhere gray and gray code also we are using but let's say these 5 6 needs to be understood so let's say one bit determines 6 db of snr or 6 db of snr determines one bit or you can have you no know, you improve by two this is happening because of it's a binary uh, like all these things are binary weighted that's why you are getting improvement by two otherwise you could could have got improvement by some other factor also other way 6 db snr can provide one bit extra resolution right so sign will so we also talked about something called offset error right where um, your ideal response should look like this one but because of some reason your response looks like this one or maybe this one with some steps assume that steps are running on top of this so instead of this 
you are seeing something like this or something like this then it is called gain error or offset error this is happening because of only and only one reason what do you think what should be the reason gain from gain from comparator might be one reason but it depends on uh, your structure so in entire adc or dac you need to find out where you are seeing some gain gain structure is there maybe closed loop gain or maybe open loop gain if that gain is not sufficient enough then you are going to see such kind of thing or it's over designed and having more gain so you will see different uh, kind of uh, response right so you need to find out where is the gain gain factor right okay there is one more thing integral non linearity or integral non linearity is a popular measure of accuracy that specifies the deviation of a converter's input to output relation uh, relationship away from the ideal or the least square fit linear relationship so generally what we are seeing we are expecting that this is the ideal one with some codes instead of this if this is your dac io characteristic instead of this there might be the case that you are going to see something like this is possible maybe you can see at one place there is one code is missing you can see there is one code is missing right that code is 101 101 is missing that missing code is known as missing code non linearity but other than that everywhere we were expecting to have one lsp this is one lsp this is one lsp entire step is one one lsp in ideal case so if we are expecting this one lsp but instead of one lsp how much you are seeing here at this particular point i am seeing let's assume that this point 0.5 lsp so there is an error error of point 0.5 lsp here i was expecting one lsp but instead of that this is available lsp as it's a 0.5.5x range it's 2 lsp some place it's going even more so let's say 3 lsp right so at this particular point the steps are increasing or decreasing that is known as non linearity in terms of inl or dnl inl is integral <coughs> non linearity which is the integrated version of all non linearity integral non linearity and one is called differential non linearity so what do you exactly have to do to find out dnl you need to look at what code is available at that particular point in terms of lsb and you have to subtract that with the ideal position which is one lsb so whatever is available let's say every point you will have some different value and you have to subtract that with one lsp so each point of time you can have value which is dnl and if you integrate all of them it's called integral non linearity <coughs> or it's something like this so still let's assume that it's staircase is running behind but we don't consider that but we are drawing that there is an ideal position but what you are seeing is like this
so if you are doing this best fitting then start point end point so in integral non-linearity there is no error or it's within the 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 range which range is actually plus or minus 0.5 less b if it is not in plus or minus 0.5 lsp then such things happen and there is a possibility to miss the code if you don't keep your characteristic within 0.5 lsp right or that is the budget actually it has to be one lsp but we made the budget of half so that it is within 0.5 lsp it will not go here and there what this is happening because of your INL or DNL or this staircase is not within point file SP. We have not uh, talked about the uh, comparator. We don't know what architecture we are talking about. This is just DAC. We haven't talked about uh, anything. I'm just talking uh, from its top down approach where we are looking at the specifications right now it might be from anything it might be if anything is happening like this it's only because of mismatch your deck may not have any comparator may not have any op but still this can happen right it's because of the mismatch mismatch of various components we are going to study that right somebody told sir and then this could be uh, <coughs> from that level to uh, 1 SSP, yeah. uh, it can be negative also? It can be negative. In this case, like 101 is missing, but I need to find out what is the, what is actually the LSP available, INL or DNL. So it will be negative in that case. So, and uh, INL would be the algebraic sum. Okay. Yeah. But it's defined in different way, in different books, different people. Some people don't do that way. This integral, some people are doing just, you know, uh, vertical steps. And they don't integrate them. Some people do all the DNL, let's integrate them one by one, one by one. So that is INL. But some people are doing INL, DNL, like steps wise. Right? So it depends. Depends on the approach. So different people have you and different approach i don't do integration i do at particular place i am finding out what is the step size so horizontal and vertical yes. so that will give you in and dnl so both dnl and inl are measured at dc or at very low input frequency otherwise it's very difficult to find out where the ram signal let's assume that this is your adc where i'm giving input as a ram you may have some sampling this might be very fast i don't i don't care but this input value the analog has to be very very slow input or it has to be dc so that we can have the, the stable output which is not moving here and there and this uh, non linearity this reason it's known as static non linearity okay few more non linearity it's not monotonous you are expecting to have the output exactly like everywhere it's one lsp but instead of this some place looks like this one so this is called non monotonous if it is monotonous means equal size everywhere everything is good it's fine but this is not going to be the case ever when you are doing all these things, you have to make sure the sampling ra uh, rate, settling time and all these things will not affect the, the settling. So this is not, this might not be the reality. Right? In reality, you are going to see such kind of you know, settling also. So you need to look for that and everything is depending on the dynamic rate, which is 6.02 n plus 1.76 db this is coming because of snr and this is the best dynamic range you can achieve 
tiny crane is um, actually the measure of how many number of steps you have or the labels and that label is transforming to actually signal to noise ratio that's why dynamic rate is also measured 6.02 n plus 1.76 db but the definition wise it looks same but dynamic range is measured at input side and sqnr is measured at output side so if this is my wheel in db if this is that's a dbfs at 0 db i am achieving the best case and at this point i am drawing what what was there in uh, in the plot let's say if this is 60 db snr so this will cut 0 db line at 60 db so the dynamic range of my input is 60 db and sqnr of my system the base case it's also 60 db so it's happening because of the slope is 1 db per db right so dynamic range is look like snr uh, result but it's measured at the input side so what is the minimum value of input or the maximum value of input we can give sometimes this will not be the case but this will be the case so if this is 53 db what do you think the dynamic range will be <coughs> so you understand this right rate curve rate curve is a real curve where after this point it's getting saturated output reaching beyond vdd so you are not getting better snr than this point so it will go down so this point is 53 db so what should be the dynamic range exactly 53 db i know it is less than but if it, if it is 1 db per db which is already given to you then it has to be 53 db in your plot if you are seeing something else means you are making some mistake okay if in your plot if you are seeing something other than 1 db per db means you are making mistake okay. you do, there is no need to ask anyone right directly by looking at your plot you can say that it's wrong right so the golden bullet says that every error associated with adc or dac is associated with the quantization noise and how much is the quantization noise v ref by square root of 12 just to make the budget we are going to make sure that this quantization noise has to be less than v ref by 2 raised to n but for the budget we are going to make it half so this equation will change to less than 2 raised to n plus 1 if i'm asking you if how much offset error my ADC or DAC can tolerate has to be lesser than V ref by 2 raised to n plus 1. How much INL, DNL I can tolerate in my system? V ref by 2 raised to n plus 1. So anything which is available, it can be like budgeted with respect to quantization noise and within the small box which is one LSD box. These are only only Brahmastra in ADC and DAC. Everything has to be within this range. If it is within this range, your your design is safe. You will not see like uh, any missing code or wrong results. Your results will be always correct one. But when you are running all these things, make sure that this is has to be at DC or at very low frequency. so that my output can settle down. One more thing, there is something called ENOG, which is known as effective number of beats. It is 
known as ENOB. ENOB is measured from the SNR equation which is SNR equal to 6.02 n plus 1.76 in dB. So you can find out n equal to SNR minus 1.76 divided by 6.02. Now you can see that it's similar to SNR and SNDR signal to noise and distortion ratio. You can see here that is also one of the synonym right when we are talking about distortion and noise what do you mean by noise and what do you mean by distortion okay there are two things SNR and SNDR both are different both are different although they look same or result will be similar but technically speaking both are different one is called signal to noise ratio so what is noise <laughs> so SNR from FFT So these uh, arrows are actually coming back. This is fundamental, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, and all these harmonics are coming back to signal, and it will go till FS by two only. So, right in FFT, it has to be like this. So, all these harmonics are the distortion. So, if you are going signal with respect to all the distortion, it it's just distortion. But if on top of all these, you may have something which is called device noise or you must have studied thermal noise, all these stochastic flicker, all the device noise or what you are saying environment noise, sometimes like electrostatic discharge all these things are available <coughs> at different noise those are stochastic those are known as noise so if you are taking noise plus all this distortion i am going to call it signal to noise and dynamic uh, signal to noise and distortion ratio right snr is generally we are taking sndr but both are actually different although in most of the books, SNR is replaced with SNDR afterwards. But there is a small thin line between SNR and SNDR. Because this distortion is actually the contributing one and noise is actually the noise of the device. So this may be expressed in dB and effective number of bits. So sometimes uh, if I am giving you an op amp, which is going to be used in one SN, uh, SAR ADC. I am giving you this whose uh, dynamic range or let's say total harmonic distortion is around 48 dB. I am giving you this and if I am asking you to make 12 bits, uh, 12 bits of SAR ADC, is it possible to make? following my question you have to design that like my ultimate uh, agenda is to design 12 bits of SAR ADC SAR ADC will have one comparator one SAR logic one DAC then that is compared again right so if I am giving you this comparator whose harmonic distortion is 48 dB so can I design or what is your like comment on this? So SNR requirement is around 72 dB. So if you are using this comparator at the base case you are going to achieve 
around 48 dB of SNR. This, this harmonic distortion is distortion. Right. As I told you, like THD is will resemble to SNR, but the equation is different. That's the thing. But it's also similar. Right. It takes some square terms and then they are going to be added. Right. So that is what generally power electronics people use. Total harmonic distortion. Right. Where lots of square terms they are adding noise square terms and then uh, fundamental. Right? And they are finding out HD2, HD3, there are many things, right? So that is also major of actually SNR. It's similar. Little bit uh, numbers here and there, but the thing is, if you want 72 dB of SNR and all the components are very poor, you cannot use that. Or you can achieve 48 dB at the max. Not better than that. Small sample, like not as big, um, like big as possible, right? So, SNR would be better. Hmm. The specification should be as per the peak, the peak, which is um, yeah, it's maximum. Maximum ADC will give you the maximum SNR specs, not the minimum one. But still, we, if we are measuring the smaller. So you will see lesser number of uh, samples. Reconstruction of square wave will be will not be there. That is the problem. Let's say you are you are measuring ten millivolt signal in your DSO. It will look like if you are measuring let's say twenty milli. It trying to become better. But still, it's difficult to find out whether it's 20 millivolt sine wave or something else. You're filtering out some of the things and you smoothen out when you are doing the filter, the integration. What it does from here to here, there is an integrator. So they integrate it and they show you some reconstruction of the signal. But in reality, it's bad signal, which is not able to identify it as sine wave. Which says okay, uh, <coughs> below this signal, if you measure, then it would uh, lead to error or something. Yeah, so you should not go below 0.5 LSD. Okay, this is enough. One more thing. So there are two things. When everything is happening because of quantization only, right? But quantization, you are looking at only amplitude right now. That's why you are seeing all the problems. But there is time is also getting condensed or it's getting sampled. So if there are more number of samples, you can see signal, right? It's not only amplitude, but it's also time. If it is sampled here, you can see different kind of signal. But if you are sampling exactly double, then you are going to see something like this. Right, so it is better reconstruction of the signal because time is also running the uh, signal and it's going to give you the quantization or the sampling. When you are doing this, you have to follow much higher rate than Nyquist, right? And that is going to tell you something called uh, aperture time. So what is this minimum time I need to take? That can be uh, given to you. This is one thing and one thing is this quantization noise which is half LSP. If you are within these two ranges, everything is fine. So the aperture time is good enough. But that can be like only possible when uh, your signal is having little bit amplitude. Amplitude is poor, so but still you are uh, sampling every time at one nano in in the DSO available in our our uh, laboratory. But amplitude wise, you cannot take enough samples. It's below 
one LSP. That's why you are not able to measure anything less than 10 millivolt. Right? So that is how it goes. Okay. And this is not a problem, right? Have you tried that DFT? We have tried. This means Still it's confusing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Try. <laughs> uh, what is called in uh, Kerala? That that one is which is moving to Kudiyattam. Kudiyattam. Okay, so it's confusing. <laughs> you should say yes or no. <laughs> okay. So when you have say uh, the characteristic which is ideal okay when you have the ideal characteristic it looks like this one the dotted line which is three bit ideal characteristic and the black line the solid one it's the the uh, the coming from the design gap right this is the characteristic of gap because digital at input side or x axis analog at y axis by the way this plot has been copied from allen and Holberg. you can use this book this book is very simple allen Holberg. <coughs> so you can at different instances you can find out how much inl or dnl you are saying sometimes it's zero sometimes you are saying minus also So that you need to look at that maybe I'll uh, if you want to see there is a solution for entire book is given if you want I can forward you <laughs> done by Alan Holberg himself so such kind of IO characteristics you can see you can find out the gain error right now there is no gain error right so if you look at the average average line it will be around that line so it's not a problem but if you are seeing same plot this side the average line is this side so there will be many cores which will be missing or the amplitude will get uh, saturated okay so now you have to tell me this so one volt peak to peak sinusoidal voltage is applied to ADC with reference voltage of 5 volt so now tell me what is the max SNR and SNR for the given input now very quickly How much is max SNR? Oh, I haven't <laughs> told about number of bits, right? Let's say 10 bits. Hmm? 61.78, right? If it is okay, let's go with the assumption. So 60 dB. Now So what will be at 1 volt? How much is 5? In dB. Look 5 by 1 is equal to 5 so I am talking about ratio. So how much ratio it's got decreased? These numbers has to be on your fingertip. Uh, please go through my E203 free class for maybe fifth or sixth class where I kept all the ratios which has to be on your fingertip. Like 2 is equal to 6 dB, 4 is equal to 12 dB. How much is root 2? Or how much is half by the way? Minus 6 dB. All these like. There are many numbers, right? Five, there is five, six, there are many numbers which has to be on your fingertip. Right? So that will be the answer, right? So now, 
find out this and uh, you can submit this <coughs> as a part of surprise field of this like now you are expert of uh, other question right question 2 how much noise is contributed in 1 volt sinusoidal wave for 14 bits of adc let's assume that this is full scale by the way when i'm saying 1 volt full scale means 1 volt equal to let's say vdd or vdf if i am saying something different number 0.5 volt full scale or minus 6 db fs means what is half than vdd right So tell me, hmm? what it is, how much is noise, not SNR, who cares about SNR, okay, I agree everybody, like Shubham is expert of uh, table of 6, <laughs> right, 14, 6, uh, 84, right, <laughs> 1 upon 2 to power 14, that's it. Okay, that volts, that's the noise you are going to see, right? So how much? 1 by 2 raised to 14. <laughs> huh? One by uh, two raised to ten is approximately one milli. One milli divided by two, one milli. Point five, point five divided by two, point one, point five, point two five, point one two five, and point one two five divided by two. Right. Is it correct or? Made mistake. Uh, this is approximated. Look, uh, doing with uh, calculator also. Millivolt. <laughs> yeah, millivolt, of course. Because I was taking 1 by 2 raised to 10 is 1, 1 millivolt divided by 4 times I divided by 2, 2, 2. I got this. <laughs> anyway. If you agree all with all these things, then uh, we can start with that tomorrow. Sir, could you just continue yeah. to uh, yeah. ask questions? Yeah, you can ask any question, no problem. Yes, yeah, sir. Parameter is to give uh, give the contribution of 12 volts to 12 bit only. So we are showing 72. Which uh, is the best? Okay, you are uh, okay for 12 bits. You are saying 72, yeah. approximately 72. DB of SNR is the best. Okay. Sir, uh, I wanted to ask that if the minimum signal we are entering to the DB, the parameter should be be SNR at the minimum signal or the maximum signal? SNR is measured at the minimum one. Minimum. First of all, minimum. Uh, sorry, SNR which you are measuring, it's at the maximum one, right? But your question is, what is the minimum signal I can give? Right, that is the confusion. So I am saying there are two things which are playing the role. Not only the amplitude, but time also. So let's assume that you have enough time. Is so this frequency signal. If this is f in one by f in for sampling frequency, I have enough samples are available. enough samples are available but only
only two uh, levels are available and nothing is detected this is happening only the case when you are running your signal less than one lsp but if it is not the case and if you are having good number still you can reconstruct no problem so here it's zero here there is something here there is something Your signal will something look like something like this right so this is one thing from this adc you are going to see such kind of signal on dso look even with two uh, just two or three labels you are able to see some sine wave is moving here and there but when it's running very fast you are seeing something like this at low low signal right i'm drawing this otherwise it's steps but when you are seeing such kind of signal you are using filter filter is if it is low pass filter it's an integrator if it is integration it will try to reconstruct what you are doing it so the first sample and last sample it will try to run visible okay so if you are running the good filter then this is going to happen so in dso it's not only just adc but there is some filter is also applied afterwards and that's how like if your signal is less than 1 lsp you cannot reconstruct anything but if it is little bit higher than 1 lsp still you can construct it if your signal f in and fs has enough uh, oversampling Look, if this signal is very small it will come and it will go <coughs> right <laughs> but if the signal is pretty large then you can see that okay uh, like you can reconstruct it so there are two things which are running here amplitude as well as time it's not just amplitude that's what is the minimum amplitude which you can give but it's how much time you have to like what signal you have to give if you are uh, let's say if your uh, oscilloscope is sampling at one nanosecond and you are you want to see some signal which is of 500 megahertz not possible not possible and that's why what your oscilloscopes suggest one GSPS with 50 megahertz. If you read your oscilloscope in Applied Electronics Lab, you can see one GSPS and 50 megahertz. That's the bandwidth. So if you give 50 megahertz signal, till that time you can reconstruct it with signal which is less than one LSP, uh, more than one LSP. One LSP might be approximately 10 millivolt. And once you are incre increasing this signal to noise ratio becoming so much better that you can see very nice sine wave at lower frequency uh, or sorry lower amplitude noise is also riding on your sine wave and you can observe this is bad SNR signal. Right? So minimum is one LSP. SNR at minimum. Oh, SNR at minimum. So that's you have to look at the dynamic range. This point 0 dB is not equal to 0 volt, by the way. It's equal to 1 in linear scale, where signal and noise are exactly equal. Right? So signal noise is riding on signal. Afterwards, you cannot see anything because noise will be higher than signal. So there is no point looking anything down and the point which you are talking about that is something 0 dB 
line you need to look at that and through that you can find out the dynamic range means i can give from let's say something approximately vdd to minimum value which is minus dynamic range so in this case it's 1 millivolt if this is the the system then you can go till 1 millivolt full scale means it has to be multiplied or has to be find out in terms of vdd <coughs> if vdd is 3.3 volt then this will be 3.3 millivolt in on absolute scale now is it answering your question or still okay so you can ask me very frankly the problem nishan so tomorrow we'll start the dac right and uh, so what about gmc filter done right today is your gmc filter those who could not do it uh, you can go to next level which is dac right these are the things which are deciding your grades by the way Okay, not answer will be very easy. What's the problem? Sir, right? I'll give. Sir, continuous lap from two to seven. From two to seven. Sir, first V A and then what? Only three. Uh, yeah, I, today I haven't done it. As well as five to seven, you look at my answer so many is not on, and the grade is not on. Sir, so, so five to seven, seven uh, you don't. Two uh, has labs like till seven, so I can check at seven. Have you watched the video? Yeah. This is the thing, and how many are there? One, two, three. Six are there, right? Registered or seven? Six. So three and four, seven, right? So so Subham, how many number of bits do you like? So eight bits. Eight bits. Six and seven, right? Whichever you want to define, you can define. It's up to you. You are already busy in the project, so it's up to you. Okay. So these are the projects for DAC. <coughs> this might be the last project, right? Uh, Indu, uh, this might be the last project, right? So this is the last project. Uh, Fine. Right. 
so may 15 is it fine is it done may 15 hmm? or huh? you are okay okay so just start uh, reading about this and uh, okay so i'll give you date maybe afterwards as uh, semester progresses we'll complete this mostly in next uh, two or two lectures maybe two or three lectures we'll complete this then we'll go to adc <coughs> if it is required we'll take uh, some extra lecture also but till now everything was fine or okay so everything like you learn something new then nit agartala or so they have better teacher than me right but they have better teacher they are better teacher right 